Beyond Your Backyard is brought to you in part by Montgomery County in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Southwest Virginia. Montgomery County, Virginia. Go to town. Hi, I'm Eric, the Travel Guy. This week, we hopped on board a short four and a half hour flight from the East Coast to an archipelago in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Get ready to be surprised because we're revealing all the secrets of the Azores, next on Beyond Your Backyard. My name is Eric Hastings. Yeah, that's me. And for as long as I can remember, I've always loved to travel, and I still do today. Airlines, hotels, cruises, new places, delicious food, I love all of it. And that's why I've been traveling the world professionally, doing the very same things you can do for more than a decade. So please consider this a personal invitation to join me each week on my mission to get you traveling more than ever before. Because while the world is a pretty big place to explore, your next vacation is waiting to be discovered not just around the globe, but perhaps just around the corner. Let me introduce you to the places, people, and secrets I've discovered that remind me just how exciting it is to be alive, and hopefully will inspire you to get out of the house and into your next great adventure. I am Eric the Travel Guy, and this is Beyond Your Backyard. Thank you for watching, and welcome. Have you ever experienced that unsettling fear of missing out? I think the kids call it FOMO. Well, if you haven't been to the Azores yet, you are missing out. But don't worry, we can fix that. You know, there's something mystical about these islands, and I quickly learned they're definitely worthy of your vacation consideration. After a short flight from the U.S., I discovered narrow cobblestone streets, gorgeous vistas, volcanic black sand beaches. Well, <laughs> simply put, if unicorns existed, they probably live here because the Azores are a virtually untouched, immersive way of life. And that utopia will welcome you with open arms. On today's episode, we're spending our time on the island of San Miguel. We'll talk with the locals about how to maximize your vacation here. We'll learn more about centuries old farming and manufacturing techniques still practiced today. We'll literally jump into that gorgeous scenery and we'll treat your senses to authentic Portuguese and Azorean gastronomy. So sit back, relax, it's gonna be a good one. Let's get started. As Julie Andrews sang in The Sound of Music, let's start at the very beginning. The Azores are located in the North Atlantic Ocean. By air, it takes a little over two hours to get here from Lisbon or Porto from North America. You can be here in about four and a half hours from Boston or five hours from Montreal. The Azores consists of nine islands divided into three groups, the Western, Central, and Eastern Islands. But for this trip, we're focusing in on the Eastern group on the island of San Miguel in the town of Punta Delgada, the archipelago's largest city. Whether you picked up a guidebook beforehand or not, after a short prayer, I say start your exploration right here, downtown. While renting a car or taking a small group to explore the island, downtown is the best when explored on foot. Charming cobblestone streets feature local shops, restaurants, pubs, hotels, and other places to pay a visit, including a local favorite, the farmer's market. I loved sampling fruits, vegetables, and pretty much anything they'd let me. Oh, and when I said I went on a date with a wheel of cheese, well, that wasn't a metaphor. But in all seriousness, how you see and what you see here in the Azores is most likely a consideration for any first-time visitor. So I decided to spend a few minutes with Luis Nunes, the founder of Azores Getaways. Certainly with the advent of the internet, we can go on, we can book our own air, we can book our own hotel. But when it comes down also to the activities themselves, sometimes that gets a little... Harry. We call ourselves a tour operator and we negotiate directly with all the providers. Got it. Being the airline to start with and all the hotels in the Azores Islands, all the activities providers, uh, and we allow our customers the, the chance and our travel agents to customize a package using online tools where you can just create, select your flight, any hotel you want, any activity you want, like whale watching or a jeep tour, anything like right. that. And we are the local experts. We're here, we know uh, virtually everyone in the industry. So you can either just use our website mm -hmm. or 
we have someone uh, to tailor made the package for you, but also we have the service. Tell me about you, let me know what you are you into. Is it a young couple? Is it a family? Um, are you just uh, traveling solo? And we will recommend you the best options. A tour operator is different than doing a group tour, correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, some tour operators will also do groups. Mm -hmm. In our case, we normally don't do that as long, uh, unless there's some requests mm -hmm. and saying, well, I have a group of 10 friends uh, or 20 friends and we'll provide that, that service, but we'll tailor made a group itinerary for those people. How do you define what the Azorian spirit is? We are very authentic yeah. in that sense of, well, our motto is in our website is escape to authentic. Mm -hmm. Because you come here, your food is very authentic. Right. It's just you can actually meet the fisherman that puts the fish uh, on, your, on your plate. Uh, you can go to a restaurant and it's a farm mm -hmm. where you, it's farm to table where you actually meet the, 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 the guy's dogs. Right. 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 So we are humble, uh, authentic, uh, and we do enjoy welcoming tourists and uh, sharing with all of our visitors the beautiful things we have here. You know, I, I put it in the same category as London, I'd certainly put it in Ireland, in that cat where in English is spoken here. You know, people don't realize, oh my gosh, I don't speak Portuguese. That's not going to be a problem, right? Everyone speaks uh, English here, and there's actually a very strong connection to the American culture uh, because most Azorians have family living in the U.S. It's very, very easy to come here and get along with the locals because we actually want American tourists here. If you're in the street and you uh, ask someone, where is that restaurant? It's very likely that person will take you there. Right. Will drive you there. Will drive you there. Right? <laughs> There's not a problem getting around. It's super small. It's quiet. There's not a lot of tourists, not a lot of locals. So it's really relaxed and, and easy. But to me, you, you look at it, you say, you know what? Here's the trip I want to do. And you can come in and say, well, we can, we can help that. We can make that better. Yeah. For instance, using this as your gateway, even if you wanted to do a longer trip, a 10-day itinerary, a 14-day itinerary that includes the mainland, yeah. if you wanted to. Absolutely. We combine Azores with Lisbon, mm -hmm. the Algarve, uh, two major destinations in Portugal, also Porto, becoming a major uh, um, attraction in Portugal, and Madeira Islands. Mm -hmm. So we combine all of this. We also uh, help you to, if you want to go to the smallest islands, mm -hmm. then you need an expert. Then you need someone like us. You really do, right. Yeah. Because again, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, this is an archipelago. Uh, here we are in San Miguel, the, the largest island, right? Yeah, it's the largest and the, 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 with most population. But most people, would you say, fly into San Miguel and use this as the gateway, right? Yes, that's right. How long would you recommend someone stay here on their first time visit? We normally recommend a six night stay, six nights, six days. Uh, it's more than enough for you to get around the island, get to know all the main attractions, and hopefully fall in love with the Azores. Right. And then the second time around, they say, you know what, you should go and visit the smaller islands, and we'll help you to do this. Airlines, it's very common practice for them to have a seasonal service, where they might not fly year round. This is seasonal, at least now. At least now. So our expectations is that that seasonal flight in the summer will be a round-year round flight uh, after the, the fourth year. That's what they did in Iceland, and that's, this is uh, the plan for the Azores Islands. But now it's up to you. Yeah. So now, you, now you have four years to make sure that flight stays. Right? Yeah. This is all on your shoulders. Yeah. With can you do it? Uh, we're trying. Right. I think he can do it. I have faith in you. We have faith in you. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you. We need. We need. Well, we need help to, right. to to get the word out. Luis, thank you for this. Thank you so much. I really much. appreciate it. Good to meet you. My conversation with Luis reminded me that locals here are proud of these islands. Think of it as an underdog pride. Certainly not misguided, because for a vacation, the Azores delivers the goods, which is why I loved exploring its natural beauty. If you're excited about a breathtaking nature walk or hike kayaking, rappelling down a gorgeous waterfall, whale watching, or boating, this is the place for you. So I decided to get a few pointers about seeing and jumping right in. What are they looking for when they come here? Normally people come here to enjoy the, the nature. Yeah. And what I can say for them to come, come, explore, uh, make a, a lot of activities. It's possible to do in, in Azores. This isn't just for some extreme sports person, you know, that, no, it's really, it can be for anyone, right? Yes, yes. from the little ones to the oldest ones. Yeah. Yes, we have people for almost eight years that do, for example, can do this. Got it. And by the way, is everybody in the Azores attractive? I mean, for heaven's sakes, you're all beautiful people. This is terrible. Is it in the water, maybe? It's probably the water. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> 
All right, so what are they gonna do when they're here? What would you recommend? Somebody watching saying, you know what, I haven't been there before, I want to see, I want to immerse myself in nature. What would you recommend they do? They can do canyoning with us. Okay. They're gonna right in the, in the middle of all the nature, yep. be in this, inside of the, all the streams. They can do hikes, they can do a lot of activities. They're all surrounded by the ocean. So there is a mix on, in the nature and the ocean. It's amazing. Uh, in the wintertime, it rains a little bit more yeah. and it's a little bit more cold. Not that much, but a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can do almost every kind of activities also. Mm -hmm. And hikes, everything. But most people come in the summer, right? Yes, mostly, yes. And people will be surprised when they find the beaches, the black sand, the gray sand. Yes, because it's a volcanic uh, island. Yeah. We, we talk about Azorian culture, though. Like, what does that mean? Like, when, you, when you're born here, when you're raised here, what does it mean? It's It means that uh, you, the level of your stress is very low. Right. So you were a very calm person. You enjoy, enjoy nature, enjoy being on the ocean with your friends. We have time for everything here. Right. Yes. Nine, nine islands, right? Yes. They are all different from uh, themselves. Even though we, we talk on the other islands, you can see the accent is different from uh, uh, all the islands are different. Really? Even the customs that we have it in some islands are different. The way uh, we do some kind of food, it's different. It's different. Yes. Girl, what are we going to do today? Because it sounds complicated, but it's not. It's very simple. It's very simple. It's very simple. Because is it this going to be involved? Yes. <laughs> We're going to jump. No. Definitely for down there. Come on. Yes. Will you jump with me? I'm a little scared. Yes, of course. How deep is that water down there? Over there, in feet is around uh, 10 feet. We're going to wear the suits. Yeah. And the suits even help you to come uh, to the surface. It floats a little bit. Very good. It's, it's awesome. I had a heavy lunch. Is that bad? No. <laughs> Very good. It was excellent to meet you. Let's go do this, yeah? You too. Yes, nothing makes me more comfortable than stuffing my dad bod into a wetsuit sausage casing. But jumping off that baby cliff into the water was a thrill I loved and highly recommend to anyone. It's safe to say it can be a little windy, rainy, and cooler in the winter months. So, for the most cooperative weather, make your visit in the summer or fall. The warm, gentle breezes from the Atlantic will foster a sense of inviting serenity. When I think of serenity, I think purple tea. Bet you didn't see that transition coming. But I did make a stop to a really cool little tea and coffee house and took a short break with my new BFF, Paula. One of the things that I find particularly fascinating is that you really do celebrate that Azorian culture and you can feel it from the moment you step foot in here. What are we going to expect when we look at the menu? This is an example. This is green tea done with the thermal water from here. Okay. It's something that's part of our heritage, of the Azorian heritage. It's something that people use this waters for a long time. But there's also chemistry to it. There's also magic. I mean, come on, it's a violet lilac. I was going to say, wait a minute. So what? This is green tea. This I'm is not exactly that bright, the same. But it's purple. It's this amazing. is the same green tea. Well, I know. And people ask us if we have hibiscus in it or not. The Japanese say that the water makes the tea, and this is actually a way in which you can visualize that. This it is smells exactly amazing. It's exactly the same tea. Mm -hmm. Two different waters. Two different waters. Yes. You I think both? you should try both. This is also a digestive. Oh, my children would love this. My dad eats purple. No. So this is a different water. This is the green tea. That's amazing. It smells wonderful. I like the smell. We smell here. Ooh, I can smell the difference. Green tea with regular water. Green tea with Padre José's water. If you use another water from the ground, it doesn't turn lilac. You need to have some minerals in it that react with the antioxidants of the green tea. It's not very common to find waters in the world that have this chemistry. Got it. You do have in Yellowstone some waters that are similar to this too. In Yellowstone, okay. Yes. It's a wonderful tea. Yes. Well, it's delicious. This is actually highly digestive. And we have clients that come here every week because they like that tea. That one is a bit more bitter. Mm -hmm. That one is sweeter. It's, it is sweeter. That's because it has iron linked to the antioxidant molecule. That's what makes it turn lilac. This is a chemistry lesson. I love this. I knew I was going to love this day. We also have for the winter, two hot toddies in there. So this one is with rank for lime, which is uh, a tart orange that's very traditional from the Azores, and with safflower. Okay, and which, which one is this one? This one is with our old limes, with our the sweet limes, the Azorean sweet limes, and anisette. Got so it. that's a sweeter one 
and this one is a sour toddy. The toddy is on with a brandy, which is an Azorian brandy too. I actually prefer the sour one. Mm -hmm. I think I'm probably going to as well. Which one is your favorite? I think I like that one more. I thought I was going to like this one more. Mm. When you said this was tart. It's a bit tart. It's still sweet. It is sweet. It has honey. Got it. Okay. So this has wow. brandy, it has honey, Azorian honey. We have a lot of honey. Yeah, I know, I know. You like, you like this one. I know you like this one. This is for you, not for me. So this one has a lot of, um, this has a lot of honey from different parts of the Azores. That one has incense honey. This one has the multiflora honey. There are two different varieties. There are two different citrus. Um, Azorian economy on the 18th century was based on the exportation of oranges. Oranges, okay. And so we have a huge variety of different citrus from lemons to limes to tangerine oranges to oranges. What's next? The final item, we'll have to clear the table. And you know what, we can do a magic trick. You wanna do a magic trick? Okay, okay. yes, it's that amazing. would be perfect. Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna count to three. So put your hands like this. Okay. On your, make sure you put your wrists right on your knees like this. And we're gonna snap on the count of three in this entire table. Will it disappear? Yes. Oh, I love that. I, all right, here we go. On the one, two, three. Uh, all up. Oops, <laughs> let's try it again. Oh. Ah, much better that worked out. But <laughs> what are we doing over here? We are trying to brew um, coffee from Saint Georges. Okay. The old style. So what we are trying to do is that the water is going to start passing up to the top level, mm -hmm. and then we'll see what happens. So we are trying to extract the most of the flavor of the coffee beans that were just, I just ground them um, a few minutes ago before mm -hmm. you guys arrived. And all the water is starting to come up. So we're trying to also recreate here a hot spring. Mm -hmm. That was this... the old fashion of doing coffee at home after the meal, an espresso. People didn't have espresso machines. Right, well, what was the world like before that? No, I mean, I, I, talk I about a world I don't want to live in. Yes, I, I am way too coffee dependent too yes. because of that. But it's starting to stain. I see it, yeah. And you have a smooth heating up of the water mm -hmm. that due to pressure, it is forced to go up to the top uh, level and then will smoothly drip down. This is what we're talking about. Why did you go on vacation? Did you go on vacation to just bring all your problems and technology and issues and things with you so that you could just be stressed out and annoyed in a different location? Absolutely not. Well, how do you take it slower, calm down? How? This is a very small example of three to five minutes, not that long. Yes. But it seems like an eternity in a world where we're like, I didn't get enough likes on my Facebook page. You know, like, come on, enough already. That's not what we want. We want no. people to spend time and people should enjoy themselves. In instead of saying, yes, let me have a number 14 on the... No, you you yeah. ask questions of the visitors. Right. So when people come here, um, it's not like a menu of a bar or a snack bar. It's an experience. Right. And we enjoy and we share our time with the visitor because that's part of the Zorian way of being. This is phenomenal. I'm so glad we did this. You have to try it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. It smells amazing. Doesn't it? Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed hearing Paula's authentic passion and love for her home. She suggested I take a short tour of the Goriana Tea Plantation and Factory, which I found to be unbelievably interesting. This is the oldest and currently only tea plantation in Europe, which has been producing black and green tea since 1883. I also dropped by a pineapple plantation. After a short, impromptu pineapple product fashion show, the crew and I made our way to Terra Nostra Hotel where I caught up with the assistant general manager. We walked through the gorgeous resort, and during our conversation, she described an Azorian dish that sounded too good to be true. If you come to the Azores, if you come to San Miguel, if you come to Furnas, you have to try the cozido. It's like mm -hmm. going to Rome and going to the Vatican and seeing the Pope. Right. It's a must. We have, you know, the traditional baskets. Mm -hmm. They go with the chef to the local markets choose the, 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 the vegetables and the fruits that they're going to need to cook the cozido, mm -hmm. get dressed, go in into our kitchen, peel the potatoes, peel the, the carrots, prepare the, the, awesome. the pot, 
go up into the, the, you know, the hot springs, put the pot in, and then you go during the day for a walk. At night, you go take it out and you have it for dinner. You don't put water in it, but at the end, you have the juices mm -hmm. from the meat and from the vegetables, mm -hmm. and that we usually put it over the meat. Mm -hmm. If you do it at home, it's not it's the not same the thing. Same. It's those little differences in each meal, you know, mm -hmm. the, the mushrooms, the herbs, the flowers, you know, mm -hmm. that's what makes it different. You have one plate that is made in the volcanoes and one that isn't and you you can you know with your eyes closed know exactly know which difference. one it is right what do they tell you after they've been here for a couple of days we are uh, a tourism with quality and not a mass tourism with beaches right and a lot of people we have unique things that it's impossible to see in other parts of the world each island is unique yeah. each hotel is unique each hotel has its own charm has its own concept you know the azorian hospitality we're different because of that it's the way that we greet the people with our smiles right. it's the way that we serve them as if they were one of our own mm -hmm. it's the way that we go the extra mile to make sure that they're on the right road to their destination <laughs> it's relationships that we create with them that make them come back each year so this is genuine and that's part of our dna you know, are there certain things you know that Americans, generally speaking, they like when they yes. arrive? Especially if they arrive in the summertime. We know that they love um, their rooms to be fresh mm -hmm. and cold because the heat, the humidity, they want to come in, they so want to true. rest. So what we do is before they arrive, we have the air condition full on. Mm -hmm. And when they enter the room, they don't have to worry about putting in the card and turning on the air conditioning. The room is fresh. The room is fresh. And they go, ah. If they want to know where we can go, what we have to see, what we haven't seen, what's different, what's a secret. Mm -hmm. That's what we try to give them so that they take unique memories mm -hmm. back home with them. We were, during many years, nine islands, each with their own characteristics, but that were forgotten in the world. Mm -hmm. And when people arrived, we wanted them to feel special mm -hmm. because we wanted them to say, to know that we are part of Portugal mm -hmm. and we are people that care. Mm -hmm. And we want you to come back. <laughs> and you know, thankfully we have developed and um, the future of the tourism here in the Azores is, is very good. Of course, we ended up spending the afternoon together sampling delicious Portuguese wines and cheeses. The meal was out of this world. A little later that night, I couldn't wait to gain an even better understanding of the culinary scene here, which is why back in Punta Delgada, I had dinner with chef owner Joel at his quaint and very popular restaurant. I know, so much to do, so little time, and all of it breathtakingly gorgeous. So I suggest you take the time to try a new vacation here in the Azores. I'm Eric the Travel Guy. Thank you for exploring Beyond Your Backyard. Cows, check. Windy roads up a mountain, check. Farmer's market, check. Producer, check. Expert guide, check. That's right. <laughs> I don't think it worked. There's going to be a cold front moving in, and, it, and there's going to be the warm is going to come from. I can't work like this. I'm out. Beyond Your Backyard is brought to you in part by Montgomery County in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Southwest Virginia. Montgomery County, Virginia, go to town. Hi, I'm Eric the Travel Guy. You know, I've been traveling the world professionally for more than a decade, and guess what I've learned? It's that fantastic experiences await you in every corner of the globe, and you don't always have to travel that far to uncover them. So join me each week as we go on and off the beaten path, meet really interesting people, and sample delicious food. And you never know, I don't even have a waterfall like that. We're exploring Beyond Your Backyard.